Did Razer make a MacBook? This is the new Razer Book 13. It looks good, it feels good. I'm excited to show it off in this video. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you're ready to put your best foot forward in 2021, build that creative portfolio for your business. It has so many great tools. You can check out my Squarespace link in the description below. And let's get into this Razer book. Welcome, if you're new, my name is Sarah Dietschy, rhymes with peachy, and this might be the longest run on sentence I've ever said. <sighs> the Razer book 13. It's a lot of fun. I like it a lot. With the new M1 MacBooks come a lot of great upgrades, like insanely long battery life and just overall functionality of a MacBook, aside for some really heavy duty creative tasks, is just a productivity workhorse. So I feel like this is kind of like the answer to that, or there's a few Windows PCs that are trying this, the new Dell XPS, and they're a part of Intel's Evo platform, which you've heard me talk about Project Athena in the past year. So Project Athena kind of morphed into this Evo platform. It's kind of confusing the way they switch names and stuff, but this is the collaboration that Intel does with different OEMs like Razer, Dell, HP, all of those things that ensures really good battery life, instant wake to where if you have an M1 MacBook, this is pretty quick too. You open it up and boom, it's already there. You don't have to wait for the screen to load. Things like Wi-Fi 6 and quick charge. I went from 4% battery life to 40% in only 30 minutes time uh, charging this Razer book. So a lot of these things that they advertise being Evo platform does check out. Now, when you start you know, seeing things battery last up to 14 hours, that is under very specific specific testing parameters. I'm guessing the brightness is all the way down, etc. But I did my own and actually got a really good result. So 14 hours, that's more of probably like an M1 MacBook where it can consistently hit that and sometimes even go over. Something that I'm doing to test battery on these laptops now is I just throw on a YouTube video at 70% brightness, uh, low volume. So very typical to me just watching YouTube all day. I do have days like that, especially this past month your girl was chilling so hard sorry for the slowdown of videos but we're getting back it lasted seven hours and 39 minutes before dying which is pretty great so of course that's going to decrease drastically if you're running really crazy uh, processor intensive programs but in Chrome, YouTube, doing the usual thing. Um, I would almost call that like all day battery. I don't know, are you guys working more than seven hours a day on your computer? Be honest. So the price of the Razer Book 13 starts at $11.99 and gets up to $19.99. That's the version of the laptop I have here. It's the latest Intel i7, the 11th gym, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of SSD, as well as a really nice display. It's a 4K 60 hertz display. It's decently bright, it looks great, and it's touchscreen. I love touchscreen laptops and people love to say, I love my iPad, but a touchscreen on a MacBook is terrible and pointless. <sighs> Guys, touchscreens on laptops. I know you love to say that they're pointless, but they're not. I have real life occurrences all the time. Just today, I was given a little presentation from a inspector who basically logged, you know, all the problems with this structure into his uh, presentation thing. And then he sat there and was like, yeah, so this clicked in and he scrolled and you know, it was a nice little presentation he gave from his laptop. He was touching and it was great. And I was like, see, there are so many practical uses for this. I don't know why I'm ranting why touchscreens aren't pointless, but I just see it on Twitter all the time. And now I'm gonna get off of the pedestal. Speaking of displays, I love that they did a 16 by 10 ratio. Uh, what MacBooks are, you get a little bit more of that vertical real estate for all of your productivity needs. And then again, one more time, we're gonna bring it back to the Razer Book 13, kind of comparing to the M1 MacBook 13. People initially were like, hey, woo, excited for M1. We don't have the option of 4K displays on MacBooks and still you have those thicker bezels on the side, on the top, on the bottom. And why that actually is a problem to some people who like portability is when you get rid of the bezels, you're able to really shrink down the design of the entire laptop. And all of a sudden you can have a 13 inch laptop that is a lot smaller. If you look at the Razorbook 13 compared to the MacBook Pro, Pro 13, the overall size of the Razer is just so 
so much more small. So let's talk a little bit about that. Okay, I know a lot of y'all are video conferencing right now, Zoom in doing all the things. This is on Google Meets using the microphone from the Razer Book 13 as well as the video camera. So I am in front of windows right now, but the sun is going down. So it's a little dark, but I think this is a good practical test. Um, a lot of you guys will be wearing headphones, but for the rare occasion that you're not, this is how the mic sounds. Check. Here I am in the great outdoors. I'm used to speaking to that point of, man, if you're on the airplane, if you're constantly on the go, because truly that has been my life for the past you know, four years, excluding this entire year. Who knows if we're gonna go back to always on the go. This laptop will be a productivity beast, but then it also has those features where it runs Premiere, Lightroom, the Adobe Suite really well in a small package, but I just don't know how important that portability is to people nowadays because we're kind of just staying in the same place. Hey, maybe you're going from your house to the office, but for a lot of people, that's just moving from one bedroom to the other. So I know right now, uh, you know, it's a big deal to maybe have a desktop like laptop that is future proof. You can bring it with you anywhere, but you know, more emphasis is on performance. Maybe you're upgrading your desktops right now. So wow, what a beautiful device from Razer. Um, it's somehow like more Apple-like than Apple. It's reminiscent of their old MacBooks. Remember the chunky 17 inch? I actually posted something on Twitter and people thought that this was an old MacBook sitting in the background. The super clean straight lines and we have ports. Oh my gosh, yes, ports. We have two USB-C, a USB-A, a headphone jack, and also an HDMI. So if you ever go back into the office and you know, you're used to using your laptop in presenting mode, plugging it into a TV, you don't have to have a dongle. And then a micro SD, which um, I think is better for just expanding your storage if you have a lot of documents or files um, and less like, hey, I use a micro SD card for my camera and use it for transferring. I mean, I only use full-size SD. So I see that use case um, more of a possibility, but I'm curious, is portability as big of a factor as it used to be to you guys? Or do you see you're just working from home forever? Okay, so we know this is a good looking laptop, but let's talk about what really matters and that's performance. So let's talk about performance uh, in terms of sheer battery life and just all around productivity. I guess it's going to now be hard to compete with the M1 MacBook Air and Pro as you know, people are just getting like 24 hours of battery life with those laptops. A lot of people still think Windows based laptops are just like terrible battery life. You only get an hour from them. Um, so remind you, they've gotten better. You know, if I can get over seven hours of just YouTube Chrome streaming, that's pretty good. But where these still have an edge is one, they're Intel based. So they're going to run all of your programs normally. Ow, did you hear that? My knuckle hit the computer, okay. And this is a big thing for me. I, ow, <laughs> two in a row. All right, that was my knee. So to be able to download the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite like normal and run Premiere smoothly just the way I like it is huge. 17 inch, I actually posted something on Twitter and people thought that this was an old MacBook sitting background. The clean, the clean straight lines, yeah, the super clean, super clean straight lines, have ports, oh my God, it has ports. And I think this is where these laptops still have a huge advantage is for the people who need a lightweight productivity laptop to go out and about with, but there's that occasional time where you need to hop into Premiere, edit a 4K video, be able to edit, send it off, or maybe game a little. Now, ever since I got the Xbox, I've been zooming through the Halo campaign, so it's kind of fun how they sync in between PC and my Xbox. And hey, this is the 60 Hertz display, so it wasn't on the Mac out settings, but it was running smoothly and it's just oh so fun. I played around with the XAVC-S 4K footage in Premiere on this laptop. It was nice to see that you could play back 
4K. I also threw some 1080 footage in the timeline from the A7S and of course it played it buttery smooth. It was all good. And yes, I know the beta version of Premiere has hit the M1. So I will do a video when that makes sense for me. Uh, I hear the beta version still hasn't improved a ton. So when they have the full fledged version out, when it's gone through its little quirks, of course, I'm going to make an updated video about that. I promise. I promise guys. And I also did a 4K Premiere X export test and I did 15 minutes of that 4k footage with music on the bottom also with an adjustment layer on the top with film convert that's what I use for color grading and I just want to get close to a real-life video where you have effects and other stuff going on so a 15 minute 4k YouTube video exported in 19 minutes and 53 seconds and then when I took away the adjustment layer uh, so no color grading at all it exported at 14 minutes and 12 seconds so it's still exported less amount of time than the actual video Video, which is good like that's impressive you know this laptop doesn't have a dedicated GPU it's just that i7 and then the Intel graphics in there so on the sheer productivity side of things you know one can argue probably a very sound argument to go with a m1 MacBook but where this really shines is for the creatives who need that premiere performance or the people who want to game on the go not at full settings not crazy but they just want it to be a possibility i think this is going to be a really great option this is a razor laptop so it has razor synapse or si i actually have no idea how to say that hopefully it's right that just means you have the beautiful rgb keyboard you can program it to your liking you know, it's cool, it's pretty, but I, it's not like a necessity for me. The keyboard is good, it has good travel, I like it. The trackpad is better than previous razors I have used. That doesn't mean it's my favorite trackpad. It's pretty firm little glassy and you know what just not my favorite this laptop doesn't have the fingerprint sign-in option which is a little weird this is the charger it's a it's a mess right now but it's very small and it charges via USB-C. I love that. Laptops that charge via USB-C, good job. You know, sometimes when you're dealing with Windows-based laptops, some things can be quirky, like honestly, all laptops. Um, wouldn't be a Razer laptop without getting a blue screen randomly, the blue screen of death. I was just going through my email and it just like completely shut down on me and got the blue screen uh, restarted and everything was fine. That happened only once. There were no like persistent problems uh, that got in the way of doing my job with this laptop. But um, yeah, let me know what you think. I have one more question for actually you guys to respond in the comments. But before that, thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring this video. It's a new year, new me, right? How are y'all feeling? I know for me, I'm trying to just start everything over. And that actually includes, I'm redoing my Squarespace site and it's just so easy to change out templates, copy pictures, videos, what have you. And so this year might be the year to start to build your portfolio, build that beautiful website for your business. They now have something called Squarespace member areas. So it's kind of Patreon like where you can make member only content for a certain fee per month. Now you can use your personal website to just extend your relationship with your audience or maybe you do courses or coaching or maybe you even cut hair and you want to do I don't know haircut tips for your most favorite clients and also you could also schedule the appointments via your Squarespace website you can connect all of your social media accounts to beautifully display them on your website you have awesome blogging tools and don't forget that Squarespace helps you out with that SEO that search engine optimization so the more you post maybe do some tips and tricks blog posts hey the more your name is going to be surfaced up on the internet the interweb and Squarespace extensions helps you with all things e-commerce. So whether you're selling shirts and you need to connect your website to ShipStation or you need to keep track of some numbers using QuickBooks, well, hey, Squarespace is gonna help you automatically do that. So if any of this interests you, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to start your website, grab a domain, go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off of your first purchase. Woo, boom, 2020, or no, not 2020. Have I been saying 2020 this entire time? It's 2021. 
I'm not used to saying that. Okay, so I wanted to leave y'all with this, a question from me to you. Uh, last year, I didn't do a lot of laptop reviews because to be honest, people were just staying in their home, right? Like most of us, but I'm kind of picking back up and one critique, I read the comments, is a lot of people get tired that, oh my gosh, Sarah, you're only paying attention to video creators, to photo creators. And probably that's the majority of the reviews since a lot of people who make YouTube videos are video and photo content creators. I like to focus on a lot of video aspects because guys, I know this is boring, but a lot of computers, laptops and desktops alike have gotten really good and can do like all things productivity. They're gonna handle Chrome, they're gonna handle Zoom, they're gonna handle a lot of things that I guess people outside of the creative or gaming space can handle. So it's almost kind of like boring to talk about that outside of, hey, let's test out the mic, let's test out uh, the webcam, because y'all know computer manufacturers can improve on the webcam. We're still waiting for those amazing built-in <laughs> webcams. So I usually focus on things like Premiere and Resolve and these applications that are very intense on your processor, on your graphics, because it's like, hey, if it can handle that, it can handle everything below, right? But I, I pose this question to you. If you are a programmer, if you are an engineer using you know, different CAD software, is there a specific program I can run? Is there a specific block of code I can run in Visual Studio? Um, you know, specific scenarios that could maybe help to represent the you know, wide variety of consumers that watch these YouTube videos, because I think sometimes it's kind of lost. If this can handle 4K Premiere footage, you know, it could probably handle your thing. I understand why, why you guys want to feel represented, you want to feel seen, and I want to help you with that. So leave me a comment down below, uh, leave specific examples, because you might see it in the next video. I'm putting together a thing that's probably actually going to be on my website that are these, uh, you know, same case scenarios for all the laptops I review, so you can go there and see how they compare with um, you know the other laptops I've reviewed um, I'm, I'm trying to be more focused this year and more helpful um, so with that let me know if you like this video hit that subscribe button down below with new though I I haven't said my outro in so long I almost forgot let me know if you like this video hit that subscribe button down below for new videos every single week and until next time guys stay peachy okay bye